All right, Charlie. Welcome back to the Belly Up podcast presented by Flea Farm. Miles, it's so good to be here. It's so good to be here. I'm We're so excited. Back, baby. We are back. Back in the saddle again. Yep. Doing the thing, doing the deal. Now, Charlie. Hi, Miles. Tell me. Yes. What do you, I mean, obviously you talk a lot about Wisconsin yeah. and it's like, oh, he's Mr. Wisconsin and oh, uh, he just like, eh, he's such a darling. He's the hottest guy in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he does the state fairs, show, all that stuff. Yeah. Nobody says that. But what do you think of North Dakota? North Dakota. Uh, it's a fantastic place. Fantastical. The winds here. Are amazing. We do have some of the best wins. I mean, yeah, and you see it. Uh, in fact, I got such great gas mileage coming in here because I was just <laughs> blown in. You know, yeah, it was like going you with the jet time, stream. Yeah, if you can time it right, you can get about seventy miles to the gallon on the whatever hog you got. Now I had to go with the wind the whole way, so I went over a few cornfields and. Uh, <laughs> You know, but it, it was fine. I got here. Whatever qu- it takes. Quick. Yeah, I really I really do, though, uh, like Fargo quite a bit um, and Castleton. Um, they're wonderful places. And also uh, Western Minnesota underrated place. I would agree. Yeah. You've been spending you've you've spent some time in Lakes Country. You've been to like Bemidji, stuff like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Wonderful state parks they have there. Yeah, wonderful. I've state actually parks. never been. You've never well, been to Bemidji? Well, no, I've been to Bemidji, but I haven't been to the state park. Oh, it's wonderful. It's not a state park guy. I did, wish I was. Did I tell you on this podcast about my experience at the state park in Bemidji? I don't know, Jared. Did we? I don't think so. Well, I was out looking at um, hiking, uh, which is, you know, walking, but on a path. And um, I found a bird, uh, a bunch of birds, eagles, in fact. And I was like, these are some really nice eagles, not just bald eagles, golden eagles, too. And also eagles with hair. And did you get that? That was a bald eagle joke Mm -hmm. because some of them are bald. Yeah, I just I start to glaze over when you start talking birds, but I'm trying to stay with you. Okay, well, this is not just a bird story, Miles. Okay, keep going. There's hairs. There's birds with hair. As I was walking on the path, I found a perch. Oh. Still warm. No way. Recently dropped by an eagle. Covered in snow. Still warm. So it, it, that's it. Did you eat it? No, I did think about flying. It was a nice sized one. It was about about the size of a hand. A little bigger than a hand, in fact. About eight inches. About eight inches. So I was thinking it was filetable, you know. Oh, oh, the grandparents showed your up. Grandparents? There he is. Yeah. That's awesome. Hello. I'm Charlie. I'm good. How are you doing? So nice to meet you. How'd you do in cards? Okay. You did okay? Yeah. Are you guys proud of uh, Miles? <laughs> Who's he? I don't. <laughs> there he is. I was wondering the same <laughs> thing. Yeah, You ask him a question, you better think about it first, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you guys? So, did you win any money, or did he take all your money? Well, we don't play for a lot, quarters and stuff. Okay. Yeah, play. Cool. You don't need quarters. I got two jars full. How, how much do you have in those those jars? Yeah, I, I had two hundred. You had two hundred? Yeah. Now, where do you take them? Because these days it's hard. Oh, Some I things. just keep them along. You you can take I them turned them in one time, and then I got two hundred again. Oh, just, really? Yeah, it's a really a side business that he started. Yeah. <laughs> Taking his friend's money. <laughs> now, yeah, but you can take him up the bank. Yeah, I'm glad we take him and give you. I yeah. tried taking. I tried taking guys. them to my bank and they wouldn't do the it. Guy is ninety three. Yeah. Oh, they would out here. I mean, oh, they would out here. They do yeah, it. They take the quarters out here at the bank, don't they? Oh, sure. They yeah. have shorter quarters. She sure. just throws them in the counter, and you know they count them out. And- so uh, next time you got to bring your quarters I gotta here. Got to bring my quarters. Do you ever play um, sheep's head? Huh? You ever play sheep's head or euchre? No. no. Okay. Cribbage though. You know, you talk, you're, you're talking about pinochle. Pinochle. I got to yeah. tell them a story about a friend of mine who used to teach school here. He had part ownership in the Tropicana Casino, and he played two-handed pinochle on an airplane flying to Japan with Mario Puzza, the guy that wrote The Godfather. No kidding! 
You got to be. Was this was this was must have been on a private plane, or were they on uh, a comm- regular plane? Regular plane, really? He, you know, being in, this was years ago, Las Vegas. The heavies were big in Las Vegas, but he got along real good with them, and he would fly to Switzerland and take their money over and deposit it yes. for them. Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> wow, this sounds illegal, <laughs> you know? Well, maybe yeah, not. Those days, everything was going on in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. That's true. I know. That's why now that that lake there is drying up, they're starting to find the bodies out there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that? No, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, do you guys have any embarrassing stories of Miles? Nothing embarrassing. Yeah, see? There we go. Oh, looks like... I mean, the most embarrassing thing is I don't know if I've ever actually beat him in golf, but other than that... Oh, yeah, is that true? Well, I I used to play pretty good. The older you get, the better you used to be. (laughs) I heard you designed the golf course. I built that golf course. You built it? Yeah, I did all the 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 dirt work. That we were, we were farming at. Built oh, the greens. Were. I built the greens and hauled most of the material for the greens in from my farm. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Do you get free golf there for the rest of your life yeah. then? Yeah. You do? <laughs> yeah, kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Nice. I used to play a lot at Maple Leaf. Do I play? I have played. I've That's played. about it, though. He just plays. He doesn't play that well. I have played with Miles, and Miles got upset with me uh, for uh, screwing around on the golf course a little bit. I wasn't well, respecting one of those guys. You know. I wasn't respect, and I can see the disappointed <laughs> looks in both of your faces as I said that. I was just playing with the flag on the putter on the putting greens. You know, it's a flag. It's fun, but. Anyway, I, I can see you're very disappointed in me, and I apologize for that. <laughs> I'm working on him still. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good for a guy 93. You're 93. Yeah, he's 93. Holy smokes. And you're still kicking it in uh, P-Knuckle and playing golf. Are you a scratch golfer? Just it's a little. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I not. I, I, the best. Uh, he was? Yeah. A yeah. long time ago when I was winning, turn, you know, um, I won the club tournament at Mapleton twice. Really? What's the first on that? I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of good golfers down there at Maple River. There was always a lot of good, yeah. really good still golfers. Is, sure. yeah. It was hard. Oh yeah. It's on nice course. Yeah. It's on the board there when the You know what I'm talking about age is people oh, say really? Ralph, you're looking good. I have to tell him it's just veneer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just shake your head and you go You guys have been doing this for sixty some years, right? So just our, our anniversary next summer is sixty Eight. 68, 68 years. 68 years. Do you have any advice for Miles as he begins his marriage now? You know, I was good. I was thinking of that when I wrote on your card you know, today. I'm old. We were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> now when, when I got advice that sounds like, you know, getting married. And father says, do you take this lady to be your wedded wife? I was wondering if he's going to say you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you did it again. You just you, <laughs> a lot of head shaking. You just yeah. Your head. yeah. Oh man, well this is this is great. I'm excited for the wedding. Uh, uh, are yeah, you guys dancers? Be there too. It's going to be good. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, that's where I get it. Yeah. That's like see where he learns it. That's nice. The weather's going to be good. I hope so. Because yeah. he's now they're down to saying that maybe there'll be some blowing of snow a little yeah. bit, but uh, apparently not going to snow. I don't think so. I don't. Hoping not. Oh yeah. gosh, I hope not. Yeah. I've heard snow on your wedding days. Good luck. Oh. That's possible. I hadn't even heard that all these years. <laughs> but tell this guy he's full of crap without telling him he's full of crap. That's exactly what was. 
Well, when you live with someone for 68 years that's full of crap, she's getting good at uh, figuring out what... Kind of rubs off? Is that what you I get, you know, playing golf. Biggest deal is the people I got to meet. Yeah. Who's your favorite person you got meeting you met? Actually, yeah, one guy. He used to be on Monday Night Football. Dandy Don Meredith. Oh. And, that name? Yeah, I know the name. Yeah. Awesome and uh, he told me about a friend of his who won the National Blind Tournament and shot 78. That was a joke. That wasn't a joke. There was actually a National Blind Tournament? Yeah. They'd, they'd put him there and tell him... You know, just hit his. I suppose the missus said hit it he straight. Had a great caddy. <laughs> <laughs> he did. The caddy lined up everything. Yeah, that's actually. And he wouldn't tell him if he he'd give him the club, but he wouldn't tell him if he had to shoot over the water or anything like that. I suppose that'd be kind of an advantage yeah. sometimes. Sure. Yeah. You, you, you couldn't see what you were doing, so you just did what he told you to do. And. Yeah, I suppose. So wow, I gotta see. I gotta see that. I mean, I'm sure they would love to see that as well. <laughs> and I met uh, William C. Ford, the great grandson of Henry Ford. What was he like? Nicest man you ever want to meet. Really? Yeah. He told me got. I, mean, I got to know him a little bit, and he was telling me the Mustang was his favorite car. But when I picked him up and got his clubs. He was driving a Porsche. <laughs> oh, that'd be oh, like Miles like drinking a Miller Lite, yeah. you know? Oh, right. man. Wow. Well, we're going to finish up the pod, and I'll come find you guys afterwards and hang out a little bit. How's that sound? So nice to meet you. I'll come talk to you after, too. Come bug you. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's great. Miles, you know... I don't even know what I was talking about before your your grandparents came here. And I I'm, mean, it doesn't it, matter. It explains a little bit, right? That was that was so yeah. much fun. Yeah, you can really the see. First the first thing my grandpa said, he was making fun of me. So I know. Yeah, yeah. Now I know why you're such a ball buster. Yeah, you know, runs in the blood. Oh boy, that's all right. The, should we get some calls going? Yeah, that what? was the best intro we've had on the podcast. I think so. Mm-hmm. Hello, who is this? This is Jocelyn. Hey, Jocelyn. How you doing? Jossie. Can we call you Jossie? <laughs> sure. I mean, I prefer Jaws, but Jossie. Jaws. Oh, Jaws. Sorry. We'll go with Sorry. Jaws. Sorry. Jaws. Sorry, Jaws. <laughs> Jaws, <laughs> what's on your mind today? Not like, not like the shark. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Strike two for Miles. I just, I just realized why you were doing that, Miles. You're so clever. Anyway, Jaws, I... what's cooking? <laughs> I need some advice. Yes. <laughs> I recently moved in with my boyfriend. Well, now fiance. Congratulations. And we moved in last spring. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we moved in last moved in together last spring and I realized something. He's like completely obsessed with mowing the lawn. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm not really quite how I deal with that. Um, I think that you are set for life. It sounds like you found the right guy to me. <laughs> wow. Now, hang on. I'm a little bit more skeptical. Okay. I'm a little bit more be. skeptical, That's Jocelyn. because you live in an apartment, okay, Charlie? <laughs> it's true. But um, <laughs> I am uh, curious now, what kind of obsessed with the lawn is what kind of lawn obsession does he have? Is he a guy who's putting the baseball lines on the lawn, or is he does he just spend all his money on a new lawnmower every season? What 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 are we talking about? Well, um, so we just got a push mower, and it's just like a little backyard because we're just renting right now. Mm-hmm. But so we're renting, so we don't technically really like own our lawn. And so I told him we are not going to water the lawn (laughs) and I have flowers outside. So he's like, Oh, I'll, you know, water the flowers. And he thought I was upstairs doing something. And I look out the window and he's watering the lawn. And like, I don't think we need to be watering the lawn when no one sees it. Yeah. Yep. I don't, I, whatever you're saying is like a different language to me because you water the lawn. You don't water the lawn for everyone else. 
You water the lawn <laughs> for you. See, you know, Jocelyn, I'm going to tell you, you are, you and me are on one team here. And then Miles, and what's your fiance's name? His name is Mitchell. Yeah, Miles and Mitchell, the M's are a little lawn <laughs> obsessed. Now, I kind of take this viewpoint with lawn. If you look at lawns historically, it's basically we borrowed the idea of lawn, which was a status symbol from the Brits. Oh God, here we, we go. We borrowed that status. Here symbol. we go. I'm sorry, Miles. Did we not fight a revolutionary war to what? To take their lawns? To know? have our own lawns. You know, I think I... <laughs> And I, not have to send all of our tax money back to cross the <laughs> way, okay? I, I'm i more for, uh, I cut my lawn like a couple times a year. Like basically, I don't water it and that keeps it short, which I'm fine with. And so I cut it, uh, not a couple times a year. I cut it probably twice a month, I'll be honest with you. I'm not exactly the best kept lawn on the block, okay? Um, and true. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I got other things to do with my time, but, you know, I don't have to spend the rest of my life with Miles and his lawn care techniques. Um, so uh, you do have to spend the rest of your life with this. And how big of a problem is it going to be? Well, for me, it's the it's the water. Like the watering is what makes it look good. You can do anything else, whatever. It's not going to look as good as if you just water it appropriately. You know what actually looks better than lawn is clover. And you never have to water that stuff. <laughs> just put, just throw a bunch of clover so, seeds okay. on there. Let's go back to to Jaws here. Uh huh. Why don't you like it that he is cares about the lawn so much? What about it irritates you? Well, I, I like that it looks good. Okay, it looks great. It's very lush. It feels good. You know, when you walk on it, it just I don't know. He just doesn't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is he saying? Where, what what part of the country are you in? Are are you in the Midwest? Yeah, Wisconsin. Okay, oh, you're so, in Wisconsin. So what is, does he still talk about it in the winter? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think he's just like super. He's just like super excited for it to be summer again, and in the winter, it, the snow blowing kind of like fixes that problem because he can you know blow the snow with the snow blower. It's kind of like. The, yeah. the winter garden. I think that this guy just likes being winter a busy... Garden. Yeah, he's a busy bee. <laughs> he is a busy bee. So, okay. Now I'm going to pose a question to you. Would you rather have him be obsessed with his lawn, which is at home, versus being obsessed with something that can't take place at home and he's constantly gone for that? What would you rather have? Okay. Okay. That's, that's valid, Miles. That's, that's valid. Let's I mean, go. I got one for good. Mitch. Like... Me and Mitch got one. Let's go. <laughs> Does he do anything? Like one time I. Oh, no. One like time one time. Window and he, one time I looked out the window and he was measuring how tall the blades were. <laughs> Measuring what? <laughs> yeah, how tall the blades were. Is- yeah, from how hot, the, how low the deck is to the ground. Yeah, how tall- like he was measuring like how tall the grass was to make sure that the deck was cutting at the right length. I think that that's <laughs> a that regular was where thing. I lo- honestly just started laughing. Yeah. I'm sorry. That that's how you're gonna have to take this. You're going to have to view you, Mitch. As your source of summer Comedy. entertainment yeah. for yeah. this thing. To, Honestly, to go. you started a TikTok page that was like, my husband is crazy about his lawn and just showed all of the ridiculous <laughs> stuff he does. You actually would blow up. People would love watching that. You making funny, fun of him. The funny thing is, is that my parents were visiting one weekend <laughs> and he uh, wanted to mow the lawn. And like my dad is also... He likes a good lawn as well. Oh, and uh, okay. he was literally watching everything that he was doing out the window, kind of like critiquing a little bit. Oh, he was like a, a lawn off. God, this keeps getting better and better. Okay, well, first of all, you just married your dad. Yeah. So you're marrying your dad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, 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 I think you are. I think you did. It's exciting. I'm I'm excited for your marriage together. You guys are going to, you know, you look, every couple needs something to fight about. And this is not a bad thing. No, you, you should know? be fighting about stuff like this, not the other stuff. 
Yeah. What is your biggest passion? That's what I was going to say. What, what's he? If he were to call in and complain about something that you're obsessed with, what would it be? Um, I often hear about how many pillows I have on my couch. Okay. Oh, yeah. you're one of those. I mean, that is absolutely infuriating. I just want to sit on the couch. I don't want to get sweaty from moving all the pillows off of the couch. And then I don't want to get sweaty again, putting all the pillows back on the couch when I'm done. All right. So that's Miles's position. Just why do you feel the need to have so many pillows on the couch? What's what's behind that? I mean, to me, it just feels inviting. Like, you know, you walk into a room and it, mm. the couch just looks so plush and mm. it has all the pillows. You know, some of them maybe say like welcome or like mm. a spring themed pillow or a winter themed pillow. And you're like, oh, you know, that looks very nice. I should sit down and, and stay for a while or enjoy yeah. enjoy a movie. Do you have any pillows with stripes on them? I do not have any striped pillows. But do you think a striped pillow would maybe be nice at some point? Maybe if it matches the decor. Well. You know what a gimme is. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I know Hold what a on, gimme John, is. My golf. grandpa just interrupted you know the podcast. In Ireland is? <laughs> a gimme in Ireland? No. <laughs> You're lying, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, John. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Lost uh, the camera. Sorry. Justin, about that. That, that was my grandpa. That was Miles' grandpa. He just came up to the bar to tell us that. So. <laughs> okay. What I was saying oh. is, is don't you think that he also feels that when you walk up to the house, it's nice to be it's nice to have an inviting lawn that's plush that maybe uh, makes you feel nice and cozy as you're walking up to the house. Maybe you guys are both after the same thing. Well, Miles. I guess. And the worst part is, is that it, it looks nice and that the neighbor tells him that it looks nice. Oh. So then he keeps doing it so it looks nice. So here's the solution. You invite the neighbors inside the house so they can tell you how nice your pillows look. Because I think what we have right here is a little bit of, of compliment envy. You're not getting enough compliments on your pillows. Okay. Are you? But it's, it's not the same kind of compliments. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's comparable. Oh, so well, you, you... Maybe you need to up your pillow game. I don't... Well, what about, do they compliment your flowers? Not really, because sometimes they uh, they don't get watered properly, especially if it's in my responsibility. Oh, uh, so wait, 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 wait. They don't make it. He's out there watering the lawn and ignoring your flowers? The ones on the front porch. The back ones, he, he usually works for me, but sometimes the front porch... Porch flowers uh, get neglected. Uh, well, that sounds like a you problem, not a Mitch problem. I'm just being honest. Oh, boy. Well, um, look, you guys, it, what would Mitch do in a perfect world? Just ignore the lawn? Uh, that's possible. That's possible. Well, then he also I got to. I, I don't think you can ignore it. I. But I also want you to consider this. And this is maybe my last little tidbit here to, to back up my boy, Mitch, mm -hmm. since me and Mitch are now buddies. Yeah. Um, do you really want him taking that obsessive energy and focusing in that on you? I mean, that sounds like he's going to strangle, strangle you with love. And that can be overwhelming at time and hard to breathe. I think it's maybe OK that there's some time spent away. What do you think? You know, that's true. I mean, he does he does a good job on, on both sides, but I mean, yeah, it's just he just talks too much about his lawn and I just as a Midwestern, I just don't know. All right, I got a solution that. for you. All you gotta do is give him a time limit. Say per day you yeah. can talk about the lawn for ten minutes a day. And you gotta get it all out in that ten minutes. You start a timer. And when that's done, he doesn't get to talk about it the rest of the day. What do you think of that? Is it a, a per day thing, a per week thing? You can. It's up to you guys. Or you guys the can, middle ground. Yeah, I think you guys can negotiate it out. 
potential. I, I could see that may, maybe working. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to throw out one other piece of advice. Since you have that nice plush lawn and it's not going anywhere, clearly. What if you found a passion for bocce ball? Because if you really love playing bocce ball, you would appreciate the lawn in a whole new way. You know, we do have a bocce ball set, but we haven't really played it in the lawn yet. So well, well maybe that, that is a good. But then again, yeah. all the people walking on the lawn and stuff might end up ruining the lawn. So I think that okay. the lawn's just for looks. This No. <laughs> okay. It, Speaking of that, okay, we played Coob. Have you guys ever played Coob? No. Like how, a, how do you spell it? K U B B. Coob. Nope. Never played it. It's like with blocks. Okay. It's it's big in Leinster, Wisconsin area. That's where I went to college. Um, but we played that in the backyard with our families, and it was fun. We both enjoyed the game, but a couple days later, he was about the lawn because it was matted down. I mean, that's a disaster scenario for Mitch. <laughs> I mean, I... So you exactly, just can't win. I mean, that's my thought process, you know. It's like... <laughs> He works so hard, and then you guys are just going to mat it down. His name's Mitch, not Matt, you know? <laughs> so uh, it's frustrating. <laughs> frustrating for my boy, Mitch. Have you guys thought about getting a lawn therapist? <laughs> you know, we Is actually, that something that you would uh, recommend before we get married? I think so. I think you're going to want to get this figured a lawn out. therapist? But, yeah. Before you walk down the aisle, you're going to want uh, – ther- there's entire therapy sessions – well, we know a music therapist now. So. Yeah, we know a music therapist. So They're lawn therapists. Yeah. How's that sound? What, can you guys be our lawn therapist? You know, you guys are both on the, on the opposite sides of one loves lawn, one doesn't Well, no, one because really then me and Charlie will just start arguing, and then it'll be double whammy. Yeah, you know? And then Miles and I will need a therapist for this podcast. Yeah. To continue on. What do you okay. th- What do you think the lawn represents for Mitch? I don't know. I think it's just maybe calming or oh. he grew up on a farm. So it just like gives him his farm hobbies well, I think, in the backyard. Yeah, I think in the, the way, city, to, so. way, way to conclude is you can take, have a good one. You can take the, the boy out of the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the boy. And we're just going to, yeah, have, I think that's the problem. I think that's yeah. it. I think you, you guys agree on a time. He gets to talk about the lawn X amount of time per day or week. And then outside of that, it's uh, it's bocce ball. I want to talk about me. You want to talk about I want to talk about number one. My, <laughs> me, my, you know, so I think we solved it there. What do you think? Yeah, I, th- I think that'll that'll give us a good, uh, good start. Ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes only. Yep. Set a timer. Talk about the lawn Quite. per Per week, well, maybe. maybe. Right. Well, you can you can wean off to that. I think you're gonna have to start with maybe ten minutes a day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds okay. All yeah. right. Well, thanks for calling in. This is great. I, uh, you know, it's good to know that. Honestly, I'd love to get a pick of that lawn. It sounds like Mitch is doing God's work out there. You want to? You're asking. They're recently engaged, and you're asking for lawn picks, Miles. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know the manners on this guy. Sorry about that, yeah. Jocelyn. Hey, send lawn picks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna text Mitch and say you up. How's the lawn? <laughs> How many inches is that lawn I- right now? <laughs> We can uh, we can send you a lawn pick if you'd like. Oh yeah! yeah all right, see? all right. I'd all even right. take a look at that too. I'm just curious. Oh. Okay. All right. all right, Jaws. Well, thanks for calling in. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for uh, for answering. Yeah. Have a good one. You too. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. See you next time. See you next time. Oh, that was great. That's, I mean. I think they're going to make it. I if think that's all they're complaining about. I think that that's going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he could be out being obsessed with partying. He could, could be out. You could be have a bowling obsession. He's never at home. He's yeah. always at home. The longer I heard about, you know, his backstory being a farmer, the more I said, you know, 
even though I, I maybe I'm not a fan of my lawn, that's my own emotional issue of having a lawn business growing up. Yeah, that's you know, true. and so I'm I'm still I have trauma from that. You can't and, outrun your trauma, you know. It's better to face it head on and just mow it over. <laughs> We're gonna huh. take another caller. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Coming in hot. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who we got? All right. Hey, boys. Long time listener, first time caller. This is Grant from Detroit. Grant from Detroit. Belly on up to the bar with us. Tell us what's on your mind. All right. So I'm looking for some Midwest advice. So my wife and I bought our first house together in November, and it's a mid century ranch. And as you know, every mid century ranch has a basement bar, and this house is no exception. Uh, there's a corner of the basement, it's about 15 by 12 feet. It has a bar already built in. And I've put a couple things in there. I want to call in and get some advice. What belongs in a proper Midwestern basement bar? Oh, it's oh, a great question. Did you write all that down? I've been thinking about it for a little while. I was so going to call in and ask. No, I was going <laughs> to say, you, you articulated that absolutely pristinely. And uh, so I, it was a kudos to you because it sounded like you like had that baby written out but nice work to you um first of all owning a ranch is cool well it's a ranch style house oh. miles right ranch yeah. style house but- yeah ranch style house uh, my backyard's about 100 feet deep so it's, it's about as much land as i'm getting <laughs> okay <laughs> ranch style sorry ranch style um it, how old is the house do you know it was built in 1962. So that bar in the corner is was probably what they would have called the rec room back in the day, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. It 100% is. So it was owned by the same guy from when it was built until like 2017. I changed hands a few times with the flippers, and we're now like the, the first full-time people to live here uh, since the original owner passed it on. But there's a building permit in the basement with his name on it uh, to finish out the basement. So the, the whole house is built. And they left the basements blank from the builders, and then um, the owners would come in, contract out, finishing out the basement, and it's listed on there as rec room. So we had that built in 1963. Hell wow. Yeah. You got yourself a rec room, dude. Yeah, That's sweet. Exciting. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Let's get to the must-haves. Miles, you want to go first? You want me to throw a couple out well, there? Has the, well, I need to know, has, has this been an updated, or is this kind of a, more of a vintage vibe in the basement? So as far as I know, the house used to be a smoker's house and I I can't smell anything. It doesn't bother me, but it was originally like that cedar paneling, like that 60s stuff. And they had to spray paint over it. There's a lot of smoke in the basement. So it's, it's currently spray painted white. Um, The bar itself has three seats with like the orange laminate top. Um, The floor is like a nine by nine, like brown tile. Um, That's gorgeous. I have behind it. it's, It's actually a, headboard from like a 70s waterbed that i found on facebook <laughs> and it's got like these painted roses on it so on each side i keep my accessories and then in the middle with this big rose covered mirror i have all my liquor behind the bar I oh, it to the wall. Dude, i'm about to cry this is all the stuff we would have said yeah down to the bar stools even the what did you say it was like an orange pleather or what um the the countertop of the bar is like an orange laminate material Oh. Um, it didn't come with any bar stools. My friend who lives down the street um, had some that came with her house when she bought them. And they're like original 1950s, like low back black leather. So I have a set of those as well. Oh, my mm. God. I'm loving this. I don't think you need even really any advice on this. I'm going to throw out a couple of things. I'd, oh, love, yeah. I'd love to see an old school um, beer sign with the mirror. So like a mere beer sign, you yep. know, like yep. someone hunting or, you know, um, Miller Lite has some great ones. I'm Bush sure Light also has some pretty cool. I'm ones. sure Bush has some good ones. Um, I'd also like to see a decanter of an animal. So like I'd like to see a squirrel decanter where the head pops off and it's brandy inside. I'd like to see some carpet. Oh, on. It. I'd like to see some carpet on the on the bar. So. Mm-hmm. Like the upright part of the bar, I'd like that to be carpet. If if you got shag, that's even better. Right where your legs go. Yep. Could we get a bumper pool table okay. in there? Uh, you know, I think there's some room. Uh, I have a table that came with it. So it's the bar. And then on the other side of that area, the round table with some chairs around it. I just kind of to fill out the space. So it's it's like 
little tchotchkes to hang up on the wall, fun stuff like that. I looked at putting in a full tab machine, but you can't, they don't really have cheap ones. They're always, they're pretty expensive because as long as they're working and they plug in, you can use them in a real bar and then make money on them. So I couldn't find a cheap full tab machine, but I really wanted to capture that Midwestern vibe. You like a full tab machine. All Maybe you put like a, get like a cheap computer and run a Kino screen in the corner. And let's capture that dive bar vibe. So you said a Kino screen. You giving me a beer? Thanks, Gramps. Thank you very much. Yeah, just like in the corner. Little little computer monitor, and it just plays over Kino over and over again. I don't care if it's so, real or not. It just kind of adds the authenticity. So, um, okay. First of all, you can get the pull tab vibe if you just get a like a, a uh, like a plexiglass box or a, or a few of them and just put them in the corner and put all the pull tabs in there and have someone uh, be distributing them out and that can give you the pull tab vibes without having to spend all the money on the machine. Okay, so you're suggesting I go out and do, and do a little bit of pull tab investing and that'll be not only an investment in myself and my finances, but in my basement bar as well. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah. You, you got it. And also, I'm going to need you to uh, talk to um, someone who specializes in taking spray paint off a wall. Sandblast because, them. You're going to yeah. need to sandblast those walls. And, and, but it's you're in the basement, so just be careful with it because you don't want to just, you know, get yourself all, you know, you got to get proper ventilation for it. But bottom line is we need those old school fake wooden panelings back in there those those are just beauty and uh, uh, those are beautiful and, and you're just gonna have those will really make the carpeting pop on the bar what color carpeting are we thinking i mean we'll get we'll get like a shack carpet i like um, orange yeah i like orange, a burnt orange i think burnt orange anything okay. that really if you went to an interior designer today they should almost be getting sick by the by the colors that you choose. Lots of browns, lots of really deep dark greens, lots of uh, really uh, you know greenish yellows, oranges, all that stuff. Stuff that's really not in today. That's what you're looking for. It's really that late '60s color palette. Anything that completely rejects modern design in any way, shape, or form. Exactly. Yeah. And in about 25 years, that's going to be hot. So, you know, you're really investing for the future when you go back to the past. So, so keep actually, that in mind. Mike, my grandpa actually had a rec room. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, hey, he's Come ready to here. fight. Miles' is, uh, so grandpa is here. You used and to have a rec room at the old house, right? Huh? You used to have a rec room at the old house? Oh, yeah. What What did your rec room look like? The guy that we have on the line. Uh, fence boards. For the walls. Fence boards. Yeah. Like, you know, you uh, to, uh, one by 12. Oh, yeah. Just, just rough lumber. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the walls were. Yeah. What kind of carpet did you have? Uh, oh, I don't remember the carpet too much. Uh, I don't know if we even had carpet. Maybe it was uh, linoleum. Oh, linoleum. Little linoleum. That's great. Were there any activities down there? Was there like bumper pool or a card table? I had a small uh, uh, pool table, a a minister type. Mini pool table. Nice. Six footer. That's great. How about cards? What kind of, did you have poker chips there? Any cards? Oh, yeah. I had, I still got them, I think, unless I gave them. I got poker chips with RLN on them. Oh, nice. That's initials. That's your initials. That, yeah. So some in, nice initialed uh, uh, I had a whole chips. Set, a whole box of uh, poker chips. That's great. What about the decorations on the walls? Do you have any good decorations on the walls? Uh, big mirror. Big, big mirror. mirror. Nice. Was, was, it, yeah, just, Behind the bar, yeah. nice. Any, oh, yeah. And yeah, anything else that this guy's got a bar, an old rec room in his basement. He's trying to make it look like the real deal. Anything else you'd recommend? What, we what haven't does a mentioned? good rec room always have? Well, uh, you know, I used to coach uh, boys basketball in Wheeler, North Dakota, in the grade schools, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and. We had, uh, uh, we won a lot of games. We just hardly ever got beat. 
And then, then after the game, you and the parents yeah, they would go come over for pizza, <laughs> hang out in the rec room. There you go. And uh, one of the one of the kids' dad, he would drink all my vodka. <laughs> <laughs> So how you many need times extra did, vodka in that rec room, he, by the how way. How many times did he drink all your vodka? Did he ever get well, invited back what? for once? Oh, when he drank one time when he finished my vodka, and uh, I, I said, the only thing I got now is gin. He says, it's the same color. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's dying. Uh, the the, the right. guy on the phone loves this advice, by the way. He's, he's, he's adding it all to his list. All right, well, that's perfect. Well, thank you for that. From the guy who knows the rec rooms the best, yeah. you're getting the best advice here. Uh, sweet. That's the real deal. Yeah, it is absolutely the real deal. So, um, Miles, is there more that I think that we kind of nailed it all? What do you think? I think we did absolutely. Well, thanks for your you're helping make this guy's bar uh, as authentic as it can possibly be. So that's perfect. All, all right. right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. Hopefully, uh, got some good stuff. I, I mean, you're already on the right track. So just keep doing it. Your instincts are good. Just keep it rolling. All right. Thanks, boys. Love the show. Take care. All right. Appreciate All right. you. See Watch up. for deer. That was good. Gramps got the, the vodka and gin. <laughs> Vin, gin, Vin, this is he loves this. Yeah. We literally will just go somewhere uh-huh. and uh, we'll be like, go and sit down at a table for going out to dinner. And we'll just be like, where's Grandpa at? And he's just walking we look around. over and he's like talking to people. We, we get him back, corral him back to the <laughs> table. And like, you know, those people. No, I just had to tell him what I shot for golf today. It's like, <laughs> so that's good. That's what my future uh, looks like. By I the way. love it. Yeah, I can see it. I can see uh, you doing that exact same thing. All right. Should we take one more? Yeah. Chippy, tippy cow. Happy Cinco de Mayo, Charles. Happy Cinco de tomorrow, Mayo. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Happy Cinco de Tomorrow. Cinco de Tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be celebrating with a Midwest margarita. Ooh, what's that? Uh, what consists of that? Uh, Tippy cow on ice. Eh. It's a Midwest margarita, eh. baby. Sounds nothing like a margarita, but okay. If you well. wanted to, Charles, you could call it a margarita. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there, Miles. Only if you wanted, though. Okay. Because uh, it's so smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Uh, that's I, exciting. I mean, I can't wait for a Cinco Day tomorrow. Neither can I. Uh, maybe I'll tip one back with you. We're going to have ourselves a Midwest Mugarita. Mugarita. All right. And folks, make sure you get yourselves over to the Fleet Farm for all of your spring needs. I'm talking rakes and saws and chainsaws and you know, those saws on a stick and uh, everything saws else. Saws alls. Saws alls. Saws them all and get a broom too. Over at the Fleet Farm. Whatever you need, they got you covered. Head on over to the Fleet Farm. Hello. Welcome to the Krebs Cast. Who are we? This is the Bellied to? Up. This is the Bellied Up podcast. Hello. Charlie. I've had a couple drinks. Who are we talking to? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Let's, who do let's we try got this on the again. Line? Hello. Hi. Who is this? This is, this is Mark. Mark. Mark from Illinois. Mark from Illinois. Sillinois. How's it going, Mark? It's going good. I just had a question. So I was I'm born and raised in Illinois. Okay. And I'm moving up to Milwaukee soon. Atta boy. And I want to know how long do I have to live in Milwaukee before I'm no longer a fib? Oh, this is a very interesting question, Mark, and it's philosophical in nature. The short answer, the short answer is once a fib, always a fib. Yeah. But I'm I'm going to give you a chance and and on this on this bellied up podcast, we could defib you. All right, yes. We could defib you. Here's how Charlie this is Charlie Barron's guide to defibbing someone. Yes. One should toll road toll one should toll roads exist? Yes or no? No. 
No. Tolls suck. Tolls suck. Okay. See, they know it in Illinois, All too. Right. Check one. Okay. What do you call a device used to drink water from? So down here, we call it a water fountain. I know you guys call it a bubbler. And I've debated. So here's the other thing. I lived in Madison for a year. Yeah. And then I'm moving back up there. Uh-huh. And so I, from what I understand, it's, it's only Wisconsin that calls it a bubbler. I, I, I can call it a bubbler, too, but we call it a water fountain down. Here. Mark, what Mark? do you call it? The question is. We are trying to defib you here, and you are not playing ball right now. You're actually acting a lot more like a fib than anything yeah. else. By we got off that, hot. That answer was very fibby. Yeah. So well, I'm going to ask. You know what, Miles? Ask him again. Yeah, second chance. Uh, there we go. Second yep. chance. Second chance. We give second chance. We chances. believe in second chances we on do. this podcast. Go ahead, Miles. Ask him. What do you call a water? Hang on. You're going you're gonna to screw it up. What do you call a device? Well, I wasn't gonna. I was gonna call it a water fountain. <laughs> I know. I know. I was gonna call it a water fountain. Yeah. Okay. And then I couldn't think. I was gonna say a I, water I could, shooting receptacle. I, I could watch your brain working, <laughs> and it was not working. Oh, I, not firing on all while. cylinders. Oh, yeah. This is the last call of the day. So, <laughs> what do you call a device you use to drink water from? A water fountain. Oh, for fricks. I tried to defib you. I try. you know, I went out of my way. First of all, I don't even. I tried to use a defibrillator and it just wouldn't work. (laughs) He's coding. There's no pulse on this guy. Get the defibrillator. It's not working. All right, you pitch it. Pitch it. What's going on? So, if anything, I, I can't get the fib out of me. I'll accept that. But I'd like to redefine the fib. Okay. And I think the fib only really applies to the people of Chicago and the Chicago suburbs. Oh, okay. Mostly I'm from the- central Illinois and and we don't associate with them. We we call them fibs for all I care. I don't like the Chicago and the Chicago suburbs, but here in central Illinois we associate a lot more with kind of the the true Midwest and not that Chicago stuff. Now, before we go any further, I think we have to define what a fib is for our our audience who is in the dark. A fib, historically speaking, is known as an effing Illinois bastard. Okay? And if you're an adult, it's fucking Illinois bastard. Okay. And you can also say a fish. Effing Illinois shithead. Or a fish tab, effing Illinois shit head towing a boat. So these are all <laughs> the variations of this situation. And um, now, why people were like, why we well, ended up calling but them? The thing fib? is, Charlie is yeah. it's not a it's not a FCB. It's not a f- also. First of all, man, we're not. We're gonna. T- when you said that- you're an adult, and then you drop the f bomb, turn around. We're in a bar. How, how old are those kids? <laughs> how old are those? No, kids? I know those kids. Okay. They're my cousin's kids. Okay. Trust me, the, right. my cousin's does way worse than what I just did. So <laughs> okay. those kids they probably didn't even notice I said the word. That's just part of their language. <laughs> all right. So what I was saying is they're not FCBs. They're not freaking. Chicago bastards. Yeah. They're Illinois bastards and he's trying to he's trying to sh- just contain all the fibness in Chicago. How do you feel about that, Charlie? Uh <clears throat> <sighs> I mean, look, the problem is we are talking about the greater Chicago area, okay? So, G C A. We have to come up with an acronym that is more catchy than fib. So, G C A Gka, Gka, uh, F, F, G, K. Do you see the problem I'm coming up with right now? It's tough to get some that rolls off the tongue. Do you have an alternative name? A fig hat. A what? A fig. A F I C A B. Fikab. Fikab. Illinois, Chicago area bastard. <laughs> <laughs> a facab, a a a, a, a freaking 
Illinois Chicago area bastard. <laughs> Facab. What are those Facabs? Yeah. Those freaking Facabs. I, I honestly don't hate it. I. <laughs> it sounds kind of fun. It is starting to grow on me a little bit. Facab. If you want to know where this, where this stemmed from, when I lived in Madison, I had a coworker who was like, oh, you're a fib, you're a fib. And then, like, once they got to know me, since I'm not from Chicago or the Chicago area, yeah. they're like, you're really not a fib. Can we call you a half fib then? You know, it's like, I, I'll accept the half fib. Like the half Nelson, the full Nelson. Can we go half fib, full fib? <laughs> Why won't you call I'll, a, I'll take a, a half dip. Why yeah. won't you call it a bubbler? I said I would. I just my I'll switch when I move to Wisconsin here in a month. No, no. That's such no. a fib thing to say. Yeah. You yeah. went full fib again. See, yeah. this is the problem. You've, is yeah. every single time we think that you got it out of your system, you just relapse into full fib again. What what's better, Six Flags or Wisconsin Dells? Wisconsin Bell. Okay. Yeah, I mean you got so much to pick up on. You got so much so going for you. What do you call what say it a again? device used to drink water? What do you call it? A bubbler. Oh, oh yeah. He's catching on, huh. Charlie. Huh. He's catching on. Okay. Um are you a Cubs fan? I'm a White Sox fan. Oh, it's so much better than a so Cubs. So I have fan. no I have no issue. No issues with the Brewers. And I have no issues with the White Sox. I actually, I when I was in Little League, my team was the White Sox. I've been a White Sox fan since I was a kid. Um, you know, Brewers fan first, obviously, but I do like the, the White Sox. Um, I like you. I do. <laughs> no, I hey, just... Hey. But, <laughs> but I, I mean, it was it was uh, that initial animosity <laughs> to saying bubbler. It was almost like uh, you weren't ready to, to be one of us. And it was almost like you were a, a well, little I, bit better. And I, I, I'm curious where that came from. No, it has nothing to do with that. I'm moving, I'm, I'm moving there because I love Wisconsin. Wisconsin's way, way better than Illinois. Um. And I'll yeah move in there in April, and then hopefully I'll be there permanently. So I I don't want to be in Illinois. I want to disavow being a fib. Okay. okay. Well, I think you're taking the right steps. You honestly. are. You are taking the right steps. I could feel I could feel his passion actually in that l- last thing he was saying. Yeah. I, you know. We, you know, on Dumb and Dumber, they say, well, we don't usually pick up hitchhikers, but I'm going <laughs> to go with my instinct on this one. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. We usually don't defib people, but I think I'm going to go with my instinct what, on this one. What we're going to do is we're going to do a defibbing ceremony with you. So when you move to Milwaukee, okay, we're going to meet is over. Madison? No, he used to live in Madison. Now oh, he's moving oh. to Milwaukee. Why don't we meet um, at Walski's? Yeah. Why don't we meet at Walski's and what we'll do is we will uh, we will pour uh, a, a schlitz on you, sort of a, a Milwaukee baptism of sorts. Um, and uh, we will we will take the fib right out of you. Yeah. Then he closed down Walski's <laughs> closed down Walski's. We do this with only a few select number of um, fibs a year. Um, it, it's a secret society. <laughs> type thing and um you know yeah. there will be a bubbler there uh that bubbler will be flowing with uh you know lineys here's what i'll have to do so you're gonna do the you said the, the baptism you're gonna do that yeah then afterwards because it is a defibler defibrillation um you're gonna hand him a shot you know preferably of tippy cow right 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 and you're gonna instead of the cheers is just gonna be clear and then you take the shot, and then that's the defibler. D. Why is it so hard to say? <laughs> defibrillator. Defibrillator. D. Defibrillation. Why I said it right before. What's going on? What do you think of that? <laughs> what do you think? Have we helped you out here or Claire. not? I think that that all sounds great. I I think you know I'll get defib, and we'll be good. All right. Hey, it feels good. Honestly, Charlie, 
I think that we're doing the Lord's work. We are doing the Lord's work. Amen. I'll see you at Walski's. We need less kids in the world. Yes, we do. Yes. Yes, we yeah, this do. This is starting to get like a, li- a little dark here. Well, <laughs> he's not meaning like we need, you know, we just need more people to convert. Okay. Yeah. Is what he's saying. You know, it's conversion. I don't want to say it, but you guys sound a little bit like fib fascists. I don't know. It's kind of what I'm... I, don't, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say the F word, but I did. I, we should have made the kids behind us close their ears when I said that. But That, for, that F word. Uh, well, thank you for calling in. I'm so excited you're moving to Milwaukee. We're excited to see you over there. Yeah, it'll be great. Awesome. All right. Well, well, thanks for calling in. Yep. Can't wait to see you at your defibbing ceremony. Yeah, it's going to be great. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Thanks again. All right. All right take care good. now. Ah, Miles. What another good episode of the Belly Up podcast. I mean, my favorite part of this um, of this episode was talking to your grandparents. I mean, it was he was electric on the mic. The one where right in the middle didn't didn't say like, hey, can I say something? Just walked up and just started talking. <laughs> was electric. So. Oh, God. And you know what, Miles, when we were first talking, I was like, I, I, can we bring your grandparents on the podcast? You're like, ah, we'll have to see if they're feeling I didn't, it. I didn't know if they'd actually want to be on camera, but. Oh, my God. Your your grandpa gravitated that camera like a, a, a moth to a, a, a light. You know, he loves it. I think I think here's what I think. I think you should do a podcast with your grandparents. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be just, it would be more like a, just a monologue podcast. <laughs> we just set the microphone up in front of my grandpa and just let him roll. You should do that. Yeah. Honestly, you should do it for the, um, for the, um, you betcha one. You should interview him and you should interview your grandma. You'll, you'll be forever thankful you did it. I think he's hilarious. Man. He is. Yeah. All right. Well, is that I th- it? I think that's it, man. That hey. was uh, another good episode. Cheers on the Cheers. tippy cow. And uh, guys, we'll see you in the next one. And what, Charlie? Don't forget, forget to tip, tip your, your bartender. bartender. And it's your turn today to pay the it bill. It is, yes. Boom.